You know, I really didn't touch on it too much. I really talked more about it back in April, but a lot of stuff's been going on with this TKO merger, which is WWE and UFC coming together to form one new company above both of those brands to oversee it. And how when that merger was finalized last week, what it would mean for both Ultimate Fighting Championships and World Wrestling Entertainment going forward. Now, I want to discuss one of the ramifications of that, and that is the resignation slash the releases of not only talent, but people behind the scenes. See, the thing about the TKO merger is that with both companies sort of being under one umbrella now, you're going to have overlapping jobs. So maybe you don't need to have as many lawyers under your payroll. Maybe you don't have to have as many production people under your payroll. Maybe you can just have one person do everything. You don't need to have as many people um, doing marketing as you would have if it was two separate companies. And that is the result of a merger and acquisition. That's what happens. When one company buys another or when a merger happens, either way, it's the same thing. It's the same principle. You're going to have people lose their jobs. That's the unfortunate truth and the reality of the situation because to justify bringing in more people to do jobs that are already taken, you got to find the best person for the job, and sometimes you don't need multiples. And that's just the unfortunate truth. And that's why mergers that have gone on throughout history, especially recent history, and when I say recent, I don't mean like last couple of weeks, last couple of years. I mean like the last 30 years. There's been a lot of mergers. A lot of companies have bought other companies out. And it's actually bad for the economy when that happens. Some would say it's not, but it is because it puts a group of people out of work. And it also lowers the competitive aspect of the market. If you've got one person gobbling up other companies, getting bigger and bigger and bigger... You know, you're going to have less options. I, I talked about this during the Disney Fox purchase where I knew that when this thing first went through that a lot of people were going to be talking about how great it was to have Fox products and movies on Disney Plus and a lot of them would talk about how awesome it would, it would be to have the X-Men and Wolverine and the MCU and characters like that, Fantastic Four. And I said that I agree that is awesome for the synergy and the overall cinematic universe it is, but that's a short-term awesome. Long-term, this merger just gives Disney more power. Understand what I'm saying? In this situation, there's been a lot of different things reported in the past few days about this merger, one of them being that Vince McMahon actually wants to step down, which is weird because you would think, well, he's got all the power now. He's actually the guy who's one of the heads of the boards at TKO. Now, he can't really be questioned. However, he's also not the boss. He is not the boss. For the first time, he's not the majority owner and can be removed. Now, in the interview that Vince had with Ari Emanuel, I think it was on CBS, I forget where, back in April, Ari said that he's not going to question Vince, and if Vince wants to go with something, he'll go with him because of all the experience he has. I get it. It makes sense. Ari doesn't really know the wrestling business. But now there's still some controversy. There's still some... I guess there's still something bubbling up underneath the surface when it comes to another scandal. So it's going to be very interesting to see going forward how Endeavor will handle something like that. How Endeavor will deal with an allegation or something of that nature. Now, I want to talk about the wrestlers that have been released. From what I understand, the releases are not finished yet. There's going to be more releases coming. But some of these names are pretty interesting. Some that have been there for a while and some that never really got their break. The majority of these names are people who, the majority are people who never really got a shot. Some were developmental people. Some were people who they weren't really doing anything with. Anybody who's involved in like a major angle right now, 
didn't really get cut. But uh, let's go through some of these names here. So Mustafa Ali, Emma, Rick Boogs, Aliyah, Elias, a.k.a. Ezekiel, Riddick Moss, Top Dalla, Shelton Benjamin, Dolph Ziggler, Dana Brooke, Mansoor, Mace, Quincy Elliott, Dabacado, Shanky, Julissa Leon, Daniel MacArthur, Bryson Montana, Kevin Ventura Cortez. Now, the ones that were probably the most prevalent there would be people like Dolph Ziggler, who's been there a really long time, consistently. Shelton Benjamin was there a long time, but not consistently, but he's been under a developmental deal. I mean, he first got there in 2000 and started working for Ohio Valley Wrestling. So, in developmental. So, you know, I'm not surprised they've cut Shelton before. Dolph always seems to get his contract renewed, but his real name is Nick Nemeth, and his brother Ryan Nemeth is an AEW. So, we know how much Tony Khan loves to sign guys that are WWE cast-offs, if you will. So I expect to see him in AEW. I expect Shelton Benjamin pop up there at least once. Maybe he's going to go to Impact. He's worked there before. He's been in Ring of Honor as well, but now it's Ring of Honor owned by AEW or owned by Tony Khan. So uh, I expect these guys to show up somewhere, and some will probably go into the indies and try to recapture their career, and some will fade into the sunset. You'd be surprised as to how many great, talented guys and girls have been let go throughout the years and just give up. They go do something else with their life. And that's not fair to say. Give up is not... I don't mean to say that from a perspective of weakness. That's not what I mean to say it as. I mean to say it from the fact they just feel like they don't want to wrestle anymore. Whether it be the bruises and the bumps to the body, whether it be the travel wore them out, whether it be I've been there and I've done that, or whether it be that they don't want to deal with injuries later in life and they have other passions. So you'll see that from some of these people. You know, you've got guys like Mansoor, guys like Riddick Moss and Elias, who were featured at one time. Rick Boogs was featured at one time. Very recently, in fact. Rick Boogs and Nakamura were at WrestleMania last year together. They worked. And Rick Booz was injured. You know, a guy who was kind of on his way. You've got Dana Brooke, who I've noticed a lot of fans have been kind of wanting for them to cut for a while. No, I mentioned Mansoor, uh, somebody who they signed for Saudi. He was a Saudi Arabian guy and a guy who was doing the whole maximum male model thing when L.A. Knight was, you know, uh, Max Dupree. But it turns out that it was all a setup, and it wasn't really him. It was Maxine. But now she's been with uh, Otis in them. That's been her angle. You've got people like Top Dalla who just got brought back. I mean, this dude, when the Vince McMahon situation hit last year, a lot of folks that were cut got brought back. Now, unfortunately, Top Dalla and that whole group was really, it was really lacking without Shane Strickland. Swerve Strickland kind of really helped that show out, that whole group out. And some have even told me that they think that the group doesn't even matter without him. I guess WWE may agree. But there's an example of someone that got brought back and is no longer there. You know, there were rumors that Bray Wyatt had been cut earlier this year. It turns out that wasn't true. He was sick. Now we know he's passed on, unfortunately, but... You know, there's a guy who was brought back and probably thought, okay, I'm safe. Nobody's safe, man. Elias. This dude's been there forever, the drifter. You know, he was a, a, a pretty established character in the black and gold NXT for a while. Came up to the main roster, Elias Sampson. Later on, uh, Vince had an idea to do some comedy stuff with him last year as Ezekiel, and I actually thought it worked. I thought that stuff was pretty funny. The whole thing with Kevin Owens and the lie detector, like, that was good stuff. I appreciated it. But there's a guy who had, you know, wasn't the best in-ring guy, but had a great look. But what has he really done lately? Even when he went back to being Elias, they didn't do anything with him. 
You know, I think some thought it was going to get a renewed push. I certainly did. No. Then there's Riddick Moss, who was kind of getting a push earlier this year and last year. He was with Corbin, kind of as a sidekick character. And then they split him off. And for a very brief time, it did feel like he was getting a push. And then I saw the dreaded SmackDown episode. I forget which one, where he was in the ring and he was about to wrestle and they didn't even show his entrance. He was just in the ring. And whenever that happens, man, that's not a good sign. Because if they don't give you your entrance, it means that they've, they kind of see you as a Jay Brone. I mean, that's literally what it is. And when I saw that, I said, well, his push is over. And it was. It certainly was. A lot of these guys, though, I mean, he's young. He still has time. And a lot of these talents could eventually come back. You know, give them some seasoning. They might come back. They might get rehired. It's happened. I mean, it happened to Top Dollar. Happened to Shelton Benjamin. This happens. I could also see at some point guys like a Dolph Ziggler or Shelton coming back to be an agent. I think that both those guys have a tremendous amount of knowledge about the in-ring. And they have a tremendous amount of skill in the ring that passing that on to the younger guys would only make sense. So... It might not be the end for guys like that in WWE, even though, like I said, I'm sure some will pop up in AEW and all of their sort of situations. But, you know, it's a sad day because you don't want to see people lose their jobs. You really don't. You don't want to see that. But the good news is, as much as I criticize AEW for bad booking and Tony Khan being kind of a wuss, I'm glad it exists because it's giving guys places to work. And if the boys are making money, that's good. So the other big news is that SmackDown is going to is going back to USA. And there's a whole topic to be had about this because they're leaving Fox with the idea being that I guess USA made him a really good offer and maybe Fox didn't. Cause you have to remember, even though the audience on USA is smaller than on Fox, it all depends on what they pay WWE. And so that deal was negotiated. But now it does kind of make sense as to why this merger was announced, you know, last week. This had already all been in play for a while, I would assume. This had already all been discussed for a while. So the negotiations are now coming to fruition. Now we're seeing a picture of where we're going. And I think within a few more months, we'll see more of a picture. That's all I have to say, man. Take care, and I'll see y'all in the next video.